So good evening, everyone. I'm talking about uh, arthroscopy and preoperative pre planning of risk osteoarthritis tonight. So these are my co-author, and particularly I thank Riccardo Lucchetti, who is, uh, um, has done a great work about uh, wrist arthroscopy and OAE. Uh, when I have no conflict of interest to declare. The causes of osteoarthritis, as you know, can be secondary to, to scaphoid and union, is neck wrist, secondary to chronic scaphoid dissociation, is called slack wrist, malunited distal ridges fracture or other cap bone fracture, uh, Kimbox disease, pressure disease, or peridonate dislocation, or septic arthritis, chondrocarcinosis, gout, and others in other uh, cases. Uh, as you know, Watson had described in 1986 the evolution of arthritis of the wrist. He is a pioneer in these studies, and he has uh, studied also the natural progression of scaffold instability and uh, the pattern of the development of arthritis. And uh, in the preoperative planning, we have to take into account the patient's symptom, pain, at rest or under effort, reduction of function and grip, the objective evaluation with tenderness, swelling, reduction of grip and range of motion, the patient needs, as you can see here, patient, different patients have different needs of the use of the, their wrist. Maybe they need a strong grip or they do intellectual work or dexterity work or computer work. So you need to address the um, needs of the patient. And on X-ray, we can measure the carpal collapse, measuring the carpal eight ratio and the carpal alignment is measuring the dizzy, the lunate angle or lunar capitate angle, as you can see here. So you see the collapse. And um, I show you this animation of the development of the collapse by uh, Dr. Carita. As you can see, the scaphoid gets proximalized and flexed, and the capitate is proximalized as well, and the arthritis develops. You see on the lateral view uh, how the scaphoid flexes, the lunate dorsiflexes and the capitate proximal gets proximalized. And um, we know uh, from um, uh, Watson that in the stage one of the slack wrist, we, we have a st stylo scaphoid arthritis. In stage two, the whole scaphoid facet is involved, of the radius is involved. In the stage three, there is involvement of the mid carpal joint. And in the, in the stage four, all the radiocarpal and micarpal joints. And also Ricardo Lucati have published um, different papers on this topic. And here you see the image of the development of the stage, the slack wrist in the stages one, two, and three. And as you see here, the, the scaphoid facet is really damaged. And in the snack wrist, we have in the stage one, the stylo scaphoid arthritis. In the stage two, mid-carpal joint involvement, the scaphoid capital joint particularly. In the stage three, all the mid-carpal joint and the scaphoid facet of the radius. And in the stage four, the panarthritis uh, of the, with involvement of all the radiocarpal and mid-carpal joints. So the stage four is similar for the both of them. And here you see that in the snack, the mid-carpal is involved uh, already on the scaphoid capital part in the stage two, and you can see here. So in the stage four, we have the complete involvement of the radiocarpal and the mid-carpal joint. And, um, but this pattern described by Watson has been um, recently, in a recent paper, has been, uh, it has been shown that the evolution can be not always exactly the same in each patient. And the conclusion of this work published in 2018 on uh, done on um, uh, arthrography um, to assess uh, scaphoid advances collapse, they concluded that the distribution of cartilage damage does not always follow the pattern of progressive osteoarthritis widely described in neck. And as you see here, is different from others. So our preoperative imaging uh, protocol is the X-ray in two views plus the oblique views, as you can see here. And you see that you cannot really distinguish the different bones, the bone stock and the relationship. So you need a second level examination as a CT scan. We can show you the different relationship between the carpal bone, the bone stock, and in detail, the displacements of the carpal bones uh, related to the others. Uh, or you can do also an MRI scan, which we would show you, show you even more the cartilage as in this image. On an, a study on patient with lunate chondromalacia showed 
the MRI, the, the sensitivity of 77%, the specificity of 86% for the detection of lunar control deficit with autoscopy as the gold standard. So it's uh, good, but not uh, so high as the as we can see in arthroscopy. As you can see here, you see a direct visualization of the cartilage with magnification. So you should see very well the detail of the cartilage damage. And so the arthroscopy is the gold standard for cartilage evaluation. As you can see here as well, the beautiful image of the direct visualization of the cartilage damage. And we can use the outer bridge classification to classify the damage. And we know that in stage one and in stage two, there is a, a slight damage and this um, cartilage is still, uh, is, not, uh, uh, is not in good condition, but is not so bad in stage one and two, stage two is still acceptable. And also the ICRS classification is helpful as it has demonstrated a good intra and inter observer agreement in spectroscopic evaluation, video recording of lesion with high correlation with histology and depth of lesions. And the stages up to the stage 3A will still have some useful cartilage. And uh, when we do an intraoperative open inspection, like in this case, you see that the, the, the joint is widely open. You can inspect the mid-carpal joint, but then you are already started for a surgical procedure. You cannot go back to a conservative procedure. And the radiocarp, moreover, the radiocarpal joint is not easy to visualize in its entireness on, in the open field because is uh, very um, damaged, restricted in more, in, um, and uh, um, in the concavity of the radius, uh, difficult to visualize. And uh, the treatment protocol in the stage one, we can do some reconstructive procedures like in the SNAC one, you can do still a scaffold graft and a styloidectomy or as a repair of the scaphalonate with a styloidectomy. Uh, but in the stages two and three, you have to go for a salva procedure. And the most useful, the most used procedure are the four corner fusion or proximal rocopectomy, but also the lunar capitate fusion, three corner fusion, and rust just scaphalonate fusion. But also uh, the, we can do some more conservative procedures that have been developed by several authors in order to avoid to do the salvage procedure, which uh, uh, can restrict the motion uh, and um, um, also the strength cannot be 100%. Uh, as we know, in fact, a more conservative procedure can be the uh, impl implants like APSI, the RCPE, that is a capitate implant, for mid-carpal damage, mid-carpal tenodesis, uh, radiocarpal interposition, several authors have developed some more conservative procedures, as you can see here. In the stage four, we have only to do a radiocarpal fusion or a prosthesis or an omen space uh, as uh, the damage is very severe. Uh, but we know also by the literature that progression of OA after such a procedure can happen. And we, why can it happen? Because of predisposing factor, maybe, or overuse in manual workers, technical mistakes, or wrong indication. And so we started this study and we treated arthroscopically 109 patients affected with risk um, pathology uh, or osteoarthritis, and all underwent arthroscopy in one or two operating times. 98 were males and 11 females, mean age 51. Most of them were SNAC wrist, slack wrist, but also SCAC, Kimbo, radiocarpal arthritis, midcarpal arthritis, perlunate, and Prezer disease. All patients had a protocol of X-ray, CT scan, or MRI scan preoperatively, and then these, these were useful to do the surgical plan. Then arthroscopy was performed, and uh, we were able to do the definitive surgical plan. In 34% of cases, and these are the, our results, the surgical plan changed after arthroscopy. And in particular, the use were uh, between um, in 12 cases between four-bone fusion and PRC, in six cases because between four-bone fusion and total radiocarpal fusion is like uh, 3-4. In Kimbok, uh, 3B between PRC and scaphoid capital fusion or PRC plus interposition. In SNAC 2-3 between four-bone fusion and APSI, et cetera, as you can see here. And uh, we did the statistical analysis and uh, the preoperative uh, evaluation changed in the stage uh, one, two, 
uh, in a statistically significant way after autoscopy, and in a stage three, four, even more statistically significant uh, way. And also the surgical indication change for the four bone fusion after the arthroscopy, the treatment change, and this was statistically significant in the four bone fusion group, while in the other group was not statistically significant, even before, even because the other group were uh, a less number of patients, so it was not significant. This is the case. 48 year old manual worker, right handed. This is a snack two, a proximal a pole of a scaphoid non union, as you can see here. And it was planned for a forbidden fusion. We did an atoscopy and we saw that the mecarpal scapho uh, capite joint was still good. So we chose to put an apsy, avoid the salvage procedure. And this is a follow up at two years. Is a manual worker. The function is good. And he went back to his work. So without pain, so this is a, a very good result. Another case, 64 year old, he has a, a snack and uh, um, stage two, three, three more. And uh, you see here the damage of the scaphoid and, the, um, and uh, we are in doubt to do a total fusion or a four bone fusion. Then we do an autoscopy, we check the radiolunate joint, we say we decide it is still acceptable and we do a full bone fusion. The patient is happy because it, it can avoid the total risk fusion and still has a good result. We also know in Kimberg disease that Bain, Bain has, has um, defined an atoscopic classification in order to evaluate the radiocarpal and mid-carpal joint and stage the lesion. And here you see this case. Uh, of um, Lickman 3B pain classification stage three, you see on the atroscopy how the uh, cartilage on the radius is really damaged and uh, really a loss of cartilage. And you see here the radiocarpal joint on top, you see the lunar facet is damaged. So the PRC, maybe you need an interposition or a scapitate fusion, because if you do a simple PRC, uh, you will have uh, an arthritis again. And you see on the bottom, on the mid couple joint, you see with the probe, you can see the, you can test the cartilage. You see the lunate cartilage is a crab meat cartilage, really damaged and soft and irregular. So this uh, gives you indication for the treatment. This is a scaphonon We can, uh, um, I hope the video will go. We can see the uh, wood joint, unfortunately it didn't, but uh, we can evaluate the cartilage before doing the, uh, the constructive procedure. Um, in uh, conclusion, the surgical procedure can, that can be done can be reconstructive in the early stages and salvage in the later stages. The choice between the two is not always easy. We know that the salvage procedure are good to resolve the pain, but still they, they give a function of 30 40 degree inflection and 30 in extension, a good strength man not, not always complete apart from the fusion. So the choice uh, can be difficult and can um, we have to uh, think about it and do a correct property planning. So the property planning is important in order to do the correct surgical choice and avoid progression of arthritis. The treatment protocols are well defined in which A, but atroscopy is useful, useful in the surgical planning as it allows the direct visualization of cartilage in each joint of the corpus and helps to choose the, which articular surfaces to be fused and which has to be preserved. In 34% of cases, it changed the preparative surgical plan, and this was statistically significant in the early and late stages of snack and slack risk. And I thank you very much for your attention.